Alrighty, so this is me making spaghetti in the Instant Pot uh, with my few ingredients. So let me get out my ground beef before it goes bad. Okay, so this is the Instant Pot. Yours isn't exactly like mine. There's a lot of different models, uh, but the idea is that it has a lid. The lid actually does um, lock and unlock. Right now it's in the locked position, which means if I pick it up, it's attached. But if I turn it, that's the unlock, and then you can lift it up. Now, there is usually a fin that you can use to set up the lid on its side like that, okay? And what I have here is ground beef. You can use ground turkey as well. Uh, calls for a pound. Uh, if you want it meatier than that, you can make it meatier than that. Uh, I also double the spices that's in this recipe, so I put in one teaspoon. It usually calls for half, but what you do is, first of all, you plug it in plug it in all right and then you'll hear that beep nothing's on um it turned i mean nothing's heating up right now it's just on uh it says off on the front for mine again yours might be a little different version we're only going to use two functions one's called saute and one's just called in yours called pressure cook and for me it's called manual uh, those are the only two buttons we need so i'm just going to take the ground beef and i'm going to dump it in the pot and I'm, let me turn on on this and I'm gonna turn on and show you so when I plugged it in it says off now for me I'm setting it to manual oh, I'm sorry not manual I'm first sauteing so you're gonna saute the beef so you're gonna press saute you're gonna make sure it says more or high or something and if you wanted to adjust it for me I think the adjustment is this button that says adjust um, but now it says less normal, and you actually want the highest setting, okay? So that's saute. It's starting to heat up the ground beef. What I'm gonna do is grab a wooden spoon. So if you have a wooden spoon, fantastic. All right, so while that's heating up, all I'm gonna do is start, I'm gonna lay that across, but I'm gonna start putting in my spices, all right? Just one teaspoon of each one of these things. Onion powder. Okay, you do this on the meat because it's the meat that you're flavoring really. Okay, so there is uh, onion powder, that's gonna go in garbage, uh, garlic powder, feel free to be generous. Again, this is one teaspoon, one TSP. All right, one uh, Italian seasoning. One teaspoon of that. The Italian seasoning has things like oregano and basil and stuff like in that in there. It's already just pre-mixed. And then one teaspoon of salt. Now, I like to use kosher salt. Uh, I think it tastes good, but you can use any salt you have. This is a brand new kosher salt, so now I need to open it up somehow. So bear with me. Jesus. Hang on. All right, I'm gonna do this the hard way. I get a knife, open it up. All right. All right, open it up. All right, good, now my kosher salt's ready. All right, turn that back on. This has a little pour spout, so I'm gonna pour it. One teaspoon, okay. So my spices are in there. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is the Instant Pot starting to heat up, okay? You can always add more spices if you want. Uh, I have never played with that. Uh, you know, you can add more of each of these. You can add other spices if you like, if you like pepper or anything like that. Uh, but this actually makes it pretty tasty, okay? Once this is cooked, all right, so I'm just breaking up the meat. I'm going to show it to you literally just poured it in there and now I'm just stirring it up. The nice thing about this is it's literally all in one pot. Okay. So I'm just cooking the meat. I'm waiting until it gets brown. Okay. Now, while I'm doing that, here's a little trick. So you're going to end up pouring a whole jar of sauce. The, the sauce happens to be 24 ounces. Okay. But what they don't tell you is on a lot of these jars, it gives you lines and measurements, and those measurements, Kato, 
Stop it. Those measurements are also ounces. So there's a line here, and I don't know if you can tell, it says eight, 12, 16, and if you fill it up to about here, it's 30, it's 24. Okay, so that's the 24 ounce mark. Well, the recipe calls for 36 ounces of water, so it's basically a jar and a half, uh, one and a half jars of this filled with water in addition to this jar of uh, sauce, okay? So once this is brown, oh, you know what I also like to do while this is cooking is get out my can opener because it takes a minute. I start, I like to get this open because obviously it's hasn't been opened before. Okay, so that's ready to go. And then I also have my uh, diced tomatoes. I like the fire roasted; they make the the spaghetti taste really good. But you can get anything. They also have like tomato. They have basil. They have regular. Um, you can use this uh, diced tomatoes, or you can use tomato sauce. I've never used the tomato sauce. Um, it's thicker and more concentrated. This is a little bit easier, I think, if you have the, you know, acid reflux or anything. So I'm just getting that opened to get started because we are going to pour this in. Now, you don't do anything until the, the meat is done being browned, uh, but I like to be prepared because then we're just ready to go. Okay. So now we're just waiting. This happens to be uh, like ultra lean. No, it has to be just regular lean ground beef. Uh, like 85% lean or something like that. So it's not the full fat ground beef. Um, if you don't like the fat in your ground beef, when this is done cooking, you can pour out the grease, uh, the excess grease. I don't, I don't bother. I think it makes everything taste good. Plus I buy the extra lean ground beef or the, the lean ground beef. So it's actually, there's really not a lot of fat left over. Okay, so the meat's almost brown. Um, while that's happening, I usually put the spices away when I'm done with them those four things. All right. Oops. All right. So while that's browning, notice I just have the wooden spoon sitting on top. This, this pot can get warm. It's not right now, but once it's done being, uh, it can get warm after a certain amount of time and it's definitely warm right after you uh, cook with it. Okay. Um, so the meat's almost brown. Okay, give it another minute. Um, the next thing that you do is actually going to be taking your pasta. It is one pound of pasta. These boxes are one pound. If you buy them in the bag, they're usually two pounds. So you gotta be careful that this recipe calls for one pound. So if you have a bag, you're gonna want to do half of it. Okay, um, so otherwise it's, it's not gonna be very flavorful. So. What you're gonna do with this browns, pretty brown. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. All right, so it's just browned meat, just like you would put it in any pan, okay? And uh, it still says on, and the button that's lit is saute. All right, so you should still be on saute mode. All right, when you're done sauteing, well, actually, I'll, I'll wait. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna leave it on saute. And then I'm going to follow the next step because my, my meat is now brown. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do, all right, the pot isn't going to be enough to hide, to cover these, uh, I'm talk, sorry, to hold these noodles as they are. So you're going to break them in half. Okay. And you're going to just lay them on top of the ground beef. That's all you're going to do is break them in half and sit them on top. Do not stir them. You don't want to stir them at all. In fact, on some of these noodles, I even make like crisscross. This happens to be linguine. I like thin spaghetti. You can do angel hair. You can do any kind of straight pasta that you want. Get all of that pasta. By the way, this is makes, I mean, this is a lot of spaghetti, so it's really good. Okay, so again, I put all this pasta in here. I have it sitting on the ground beef. Do not stir it, okay? Now you're gonna stir it. Now you're just gonna pour it over, not stirring. Tomato sauce, or I'm sorry, the uh, spaghetti sauce. Okay. Water, which is 36 ounces. Again, one and a half of these. Okay, because this is a 24 ounce uh, jar. So 24 ounces and then 12 ounces. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the sink and I'm gonna fill the 
Pesach. Okay, 24 ounces. And it also has the added benefit of uh, getting all this sauce out. Okay, notice this is half, goes right up to the line. So one and a half, okay? Still not stirring, you are never gonna stir this until it's done. Here are my diced tomatoes. I'm just gonna pour those bad boys in there. Okay. All right, all you wanna do is make sure all the noodles are pushed down below the water. You do not stir it. Don't stir, trust me on this. All right, so you're just gonna make sure that that's pushed under. Okay, what you're gonna do next, let me put this on a different zoom, all right? You're gonna turn it off. Now for me, it says warm or cancel. I believe on your model it says cancel. So you're gonna say cancel. Mine's happens to say off. Yours might be a little different. Now I'm turning it, gonna turn it on to the actual pressure cooking. This is a manual mode, okay? So for me, it actually says manual, okay? For you, I believe yours actually says pressure cook and it might be over here. Those are really the only two buttons I ever use are saute, manual, and off, okay? That's pretty much it. So for this, I am going to, first of all, I'm gonna check my sauce. Most pastas is just an eight minute thing. Um, but if it's a different kind of pasta that takes longer to cook when you're boiling it, sometimes you put it for more. So in this, in this case, no, eight minutes works for this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the manual button and this is the number of minutes, okay? 15, uh, if you go and it says eight and then zero, zero, that actually means eight hours. You don't want that. You just want it to say eight. So I'm pressing the minus button until I get to eight. Now on my model, I don't have to press any buttons to start, okay? All I have to do is close the lid and lock. And then the last thing you have to do is this vent, okay? Now your model is gonna be different, but they have this vent thing, okay? And it looks like this. The vent is either open or it's closed, okay? You want it, it has to be closed for it to build pressure. This is a pressure cooker. When pressure builds up, which is just steam inside and that's what's cooking it, then this little silver thing is a little pin. When it pops up to the top and it's flush up here, it means it's come to pressure, okay? So you're, this is the vent that's closed, okay? So I don't know if you heard it beep, it means it's on. It is now building pressure. Once that comes to pressure and this thing rises to the top, this, this little pin, then it starts that eight minute countdown. When you are done, when the counting is done for this recipe, when the timer is done, you are going to turn this to open and it's gonna release a ton of steam, okay? And it's gonna shoot up, it's gonna go whoosh, and it's gonna be really loud and, and stuff like that. So don't have it under a countertop. Uh, you'll wanna bring it away from a countertop uh, just cause steam will get into it. Anyway, once that's done, and that pin drops back down to below the black. I can't even move my finger. All right, then you are gonna open the lid when you're done like that, open the lid, do this, stir it up, and then you're ready to serve, okay? But I will uh, pause the video, and then uh, when it's done, I will show you what to do uh, after that, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and close this vent and now it's still cooking, it's gonna build pressure, and away we go. All right, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. It's still building up pressure, so it still says on, so we're still haven't started the eight minute timer. Uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the pin is still down, but you can hear it starting to make gurgling noises. Uh, that means it's starting to come to pressure, okay? Uh, again, the timer won't start uh, counting down until the pressure, uh, until that, nope, oh, see it's starting to rise. Once that pin reaches the top, it's become fully pressurized, okay? By the way, you won't be able to unlock the lid at this point. That's a safety feature uh, because this is under pressure uh, and would explode. So uh, tell Austin not to try it, okay? Uh, I'm just giving it a minute. There it goes. So you see that pin drop from the top, 
uh, I'm sorry, raised to the top. That means it's fully pressurized. Once it's been pressurized for a minute, this, uh, the on will change to the number of minutes you put in. All right, so once you come to full pressure, I'm gonna give it a second here. You'll see this turn to the eight, which is the eight minutes that we, uh, that we input. By the way, the one thing I did not say uh, is when you press manual, that manual button right here, you actually want it to say high pressure instead of low pressure. Okay, so you wanna make sure high pressure is the one that's lit up. Usually you do that by this adjust button or some other button on your um, Instant Pot as well. All right, so still waiting for the timer to go. You'll see it in just a second. Jeez. I can actually hear it cooking inside. So it's really weird that the still says on. I didn't think it took this long. Only when I'm waiting. Mm. Keeping the video on, I'll probably edit this part out. Wow, they aren't lying, a watch pot never boils. Oh, there we go. So it just started at the eight. So now it's gonna count down for eight minutes. I'm gonna try and uh, start the video back up right when it was about, when, when it's about done. Um, so you can hear what it sounds like and what you do after that. So I'll show you what happens. You can hear it beeping. That means it's ready. This means it's going on to low heat. And now it's gonna start counting up. Okay, so when you see L, that means it's done cooking. Once it's done, it's gonna keep on warm and it's gonna count up and then like after a half an hour, it'll shut itself off. But otherwise it's just gonna keep everything warm. So what you do next is, and I'm gonna bring the, bring this over and say, I'm gonna to touch, I'm gonna to turn the vent. Yours might be a button. Uh, it might look like this. So this one has a, a switch. That switch would open or shut uh, the vent. In this case, you turn this, okay? So it's closed and you're gonna open it. You can't see it, but you can hear it. Okay. Okay. All right, so once it's done, now with spaghetti, as soon as the timer is done, you're gonna open that vent. Okay, with meat, it's a little bit different. You don't want to do this with meat, okay? The goal is to have that running until that pin drops. And you'll actually hear it drop. Um, it's not until that pin drops that you can even open the lid, okay? So you can't do anything with it until you open the lid. Now, while that's turning off, that's when you want this. This little implement is your spaghetti, uh, your noodle grabber, all right? So it's a slotted spoon, but it also grabs your noodles. So you can scoop this into your uh, bowl or plate, okay? What I also do is I have a big old Tupperware, a big one, that's where all my leftovers are gonna go. It keeps in the fridge for a number of days. Um, yeah, Andy eats it all, usually. <laughs> so uh, it's great to have extra meals when you, uh, you know, when you're in a rush or something like that, okay? So, it's losing steam. Okay, still going. Sometimes this process of letting the steam out can take several minutes. So you can see it's already taken one minute.
just based on, or it's, it's actually up to two minutes now. So um, we're just gonna let this run. Okay. more forceful than this so I might have something on the inside of the lid that's um, not sitting right it's okay it's still releasing steam it's just not as forceful as usual it's still gonna be very good all right we're at the three minute mark normally you can even see the steam so don't be surprised just don't put your fingers in the way or anything like that you might burn yourself um, I haven't but uh, it is possible I mean it is steam so Can see a little steam coming out sounds like it's getting close so i'm gonna move the camera to show you what happens when the steam is done being let out this pin will drop now my instant pot is years old so sometimes it's supposed to drop and doesn't totally so for instance there, okay, so it actually did drop. Now it's ready to be opened, okay? So I'm gonna set this back down, grab it, turn. All right, you hear that beeping? That means it's open. Careful, this uh, collects water, the condensation. So I usually just kind of hold it, let the water drip back in. And I set that down so it's not in the way. Now I'm going to turn this sideways so it's not in my way and I'm going to show you. All I'm going to do is now, hang on, I'm just going to stir it up and let it sit for a few minutes. Uh, it will absorb all of this water that you set on top and you're not going to have any excess water. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir everything around. There's a lot more water than usual, I'll tell you. Um, but we're going to let it sit. Uh, a lot of it does get up, end up getting absorbed. Okay. But once that's done, I usually let it sit for a few minutes. Um, once it's done, you can scoop out your pasta with your little pasta scoop. Okay. And put it in your plate and that's all you have to do. Okay. Any leftovers. Now this pot is going to be hot. So be careful. Um, any leftovers will go in your Tupperware and you can just reheat them. Okay. That's all she wrote.